zero your staff member to your knowledge. Uh, telephone various people and uh, encourage them to come down to City Hall and vote at by SMP. No, sir. You know a person by the name of uh, Willa Dixon, do you know? Yes. And you are aware, are you not, <clears throat> that Willa Dixon has told a number of people about her absentee voting experience here in City Hall? Yes, I am. And those people include Mike Canning and Charles Stratsky and Shauna Doran, uh, sorry, Shauna Durant, D-O-R-A-N, and Lewis Washington. I don't know who all they are. I mean, you know, some of them. I know these people. Um, I don't know everyone you name, but I know some of the people you name. This I do, but I don't well, know their knowledge of Bill. I can't speak for who told what and when and where. I can only speak for me. Well, Willa Dixon told you that uh, Lewis Washington was present when she told our stories, didn't she? I don't recall her exact statement. But she told you that. She advised me some people were pressuring her to say and do some things that she felt uncomfortable with. And Lewis Washington was one of those people. He may have been. Okay. We'll come back to that. Now, when she was here, um, you told her that she could vote absentee she wished to while she was here. After she stated that she would not be able to vote because of a cleaning job or something, and I, uh, certainly I thought that there was an opportunity to vote absentee. Yes, sir, that's correct. And she asked you for advice as to whom to vote for, didn't she? No, she did not. And she told, you told her that she, she should vote for James Lewis, didn't she? No, I did not. After you've spoken to her and told her that uh, she could vote by absentee while she was here, she in fact went in and voted, didn't she? She asked about the candidate. She didn't know the candidate, and I told her who they were. And you all, and then she, uh, I assume, went in and voted that time. I wasn't around when she uh, voted. I, I think I was leaving the office at the time I spoke with her. You were around when she came out of the voting uh, room, were you not? I don't recall. And uh, you asked her whom she voted for. No, I did not. And she told you that she voted for <clears throat> the first name on the list. You just asked me. She told me who she voted for. I said, no, she did not. Well, I'm asking you another question, Mr. Watson. Okay, what's the question, sir? She told you that she voted for the first name on the list, didn't she? No, sir. And you then told her that that was the wrong name. She should have voted for the second name on the list. Absolutely not. And then you took her back in, or sent her back in, or directed her back in to the uh, Mr. Henderson's office, didn't you? Absolutely not. And Mr. Henderson gave her a second ballot and took out the first one and tore it out. Is that not right? I can't speak for what happened in Mr. Henderson's office. You can only... I'm not asking you to he, answer well, a question you can't answer if you don't know the right. answer. You're asking me a question that I cannot answer. I cannot speak for another person. So you don't know. So you would have to ask that person on that question. You don't know the answer to the question. I have no knowledge of what you're talking about. Okay. Oh, you've heard this story. I've heard the story, but I have no knowledge personal. If you ask me, yes. you advise me that this happened, and I can't tell you I didn't witness it happen. Okay. <clears throat> Henderson they made no record of, uh, of, of, of these events, of having given uh, a second ballot to Willis Jackson and torn up the first one, did he? And Mr. Henderson would have answered that question. You haven't seen any records that he made, have you? No, sir, I haven't. Now, you were not aware uh, at that time when Willis Dixon came back out that Mr. Henderson had torn up a ballot for him. 
if my memory serves me correctly, I left. I was leaving the office when I talked to Ms. Dixon prior to her uh, voting. So I don't think I was here at that time. Well, my question was, you were not aware at that time that Henderson had sworn up the first ballot? At that time, no, sir. No. But later, you told several people that, in fact, you were unaware at the time that Henderson had sworn up the ballot, but you learned of it later, didn't you? I explained that Ms. Dixon came to me with some concerns, and that was in those concerns that she advised me of. The fact that the ballot had been torn up. I don't know whether it was specified as a ballot being torn, but she advised some individuals wanted her to go on record to be taped to state some things that she thought were untrue about me, and she did not feel comfortable doing it. That's, that's, I can't give you due. It's just of the language. Is the truth? Mr. Watson, that a few days, some days after this event, that uh, you in fact went to various people, including Mike Canny and Charles Strapsky and Connie Canny, and told her, told them on your own volition that you didn't do anything wrong and that you didn't know anything about tearing up the ballot until after the fact. I don't think I did anything. I still don't say, we'll say I did any, I did nothing wrong. Didn't you, in fact, make a I statement recall. such as that? I don't recall. You didn't tell these people that you were unaware of the tearing up of the ballot until after it happened? I don't recall. I just don't recall at this time. You said to these people, did you not, that someone might have to be fired or punished as a result of that ballot being tearing up to one I know of something I did not say. You did not say that? No. And no one has been fired or punished uh, over that episode or the allegations of that? No, sir. That's the first I've heard of that. And this episode was not reported to the canvassing board in its meeting of April 11, 2006, was it? No, sir. Now, you said a moment ago this was the first time I've heard of that. First time I've heard about somebody being fired. But you've heard of all the rest of it before. All the rest of what you have. Oh, the thing that I've asked you about. I'm not asking you to you say you agree with them, but you've heard about it before. You have to be specific. Now, at some point, you became aware that Willis Dixon has told several people about what has occurred here at the City Hall in Chicago. As I stated earlier, Ms. Dixon came to me in the parking lot in tears, crying, uh, referencing being uncomfortable with, with uh, being harassed by certain individuals, referencing uh, going on camera or being recorded to make statements uh, about uh, her voting. Now, you sent a memorandum to the uh, members of the commission on or about May 10th, did you not? I don't know the specific date, but I did send a memorandum to the commission informing them of um, the, uh, incident. I'm going to show you what will become plaintiff's exhibit one, Mr. Watson, mm -hmm. and ask you to look at that. And uh, unfortunately, this is not on your letterhead, but I'd like you to read that uh, memorandum uh, and tell me if this is the memorandum that you wrote. I would have to look at. I, will, I cannot and will not go on record stating this is my memo. But what I can do is go to the city and get the record and get the memo that I drafted. I don't know. This is not on my letterhead, so it's not the memo I drafted, so I can't even we'll, we'll, entertain that. We'll, we'll take pause here and let you go get it. I'll, I'll try to get the staff to find it. You can certainly take that with you if you don't need help.
would you record there that uh, Mr. Cannon's 